Dear students, let's start learning about a typical spinal nerve. To understand that, we need to look into this schematic diagram of a typical spinal nerve. Let's start labeling it. What is this structure? This is you're looking at the spinal cord, a section of spinal cord. And then we all know from the spinal cord on both the sides, the spinal nerve emerges as rootlets, both anteriorly and posteriorly. For the nerves, we use the term ventrally and dorsally. So this is a dorsal root, which is because it's placed posteriorly. And then we are looking at, within this dorsal root, a part which has been swollen. And this one, this swollen part, which is located within my dorsal root, we call this as dorsal root ganglion. Then, ventrally, this one is my frontal root. Now, the dorsal root and the ventral root, they join to form a spinal nerve on both the sides. So, this is my spinal nerve. Each spinal nerve has what components? It has motor, sensory and sympathetic. Now let's see the other labels. The spinal nerve, it divides after emerging from where? From the intervertebral foramina. One branch goes anteriorly and one branch goes posteriorly. We call these branches as the rami. One who goes posteriorly, we call it dorsal ramus. And then one we goes anteriorly, we call it ventral ramus. Then, if you can see, with this spinal nerve, these structures which has been hanging on both the sides, these are my sympathetic trunk ganglion. And these ganglions, they are connected in a vertical chain and we call it as sympathetic chain. The sympathetic chain extends from the neck right into my pelvic cavity on both the sides. Now, we can see there are numerous branches which are emerging from my spinal nerve throughout its course, posteriorly, anteriorly and laterally. So what these branches has been named, they are named according to their location. The one which is located posteriorly, we call it posterior cutaneous branch. The one who is located laterally, we call it lateral cutaneous branch. And the one who is placed anteriorly, we call it anterior cutaneous branch. Now, let's look into this schematic picture. And within that, what is this structure which has been circled by this orange? That is my ventral root. And what about this one? This is my dorsal root. And this swollen part, we call it dorsal root ganglion. And then my dorsal root and the ventral root, they join to give us a spinal nerve. And then each spinal nerve, it divides anteriorly and posteriorly. And the posterior one is called dorsal ramus. And the one who is located anteriorly, we call it ventral ramus. Are we good so far? We have not talked about one structure and this is the one which has been labeled by this yellow arrow. That is my sympathetic trunk ganglion. So let's start looking into the different component of a spinal nerve. We all know each spinal nerve comprises of motor fibers, sensory fibers and sympathetic fibers. For the purpose of convenience and understanding, I will draw them individually so that you can have a better understanding. So let's start making them. So what, what is this rounded reddish structure which is located in my spinal cord where? In the ventral horn. So this reddish structure is my motor neuron cell body. And this motor neuron cell body, what it does through this motor neuron cell body, we draw the motor fiber. And that you can see it runs in where? Which root of my spinal nerve? 
it runs in the ventral root and this motor fiber which runs in the ventral root what is the function of this motor fiber this motor fiber primarily it is responsible to control the skeletal muscle and it brings the commands which are coming from my higher centers from my brain and they have been communicated they have been brought down and they have been this motor fiber is primarily controlling the skeletal muscles for the act of contraction and relaxation relaxation and they bring about the different movements so when this motor fiber it reach when it emerges within this spinal nerve it divides one who goes posteriorly it runs where in the dorsal ramus and when it goes posteriorly you can see that it gives cutaneous branches as well as muscular branches and then it continues its journey in the ventral ramus and it reaches all the way anteriorly to meet its counterpart and on its way it gives different branches cutaneous as well as muscular so we can see that anterior cutaneous branches has been given this motor fiber and then we can also see the lateral branches has been given from this motor fiber those who are going inside primarily they are controlling the muscles if they are located within the body wall so these are my lateral cutaneous branches so now we have seen the pathway of a motor fiber and how and where it begins and what are its different branches in journal now let's start learning about the sensory component of a spinal nerve first of all what is this yellow structure it's not located in the dorsal horn but it is located within the dorsal root ganglion and that is my sensory neuron cell body and now you can see that a sensory nerve a sensory component starts making so so the sensations what type of sensation pain touch temperature proprioception pressure all these senses has been carried from my different receptors and these informations are going backwards towards my higher center and we are receiving anterior cutaneous branches they are also pouring their sensation laterally internally so this is the distribution of sensory fibers within my ventral ramus of a spinal nerve and then you can see from the dorsal ramus we have contribution and first they relay into this sensory neuron cell body and ultimately it's been going where into the dorsal horn of my spinal cord and from there these tracks they ascends and they reach to the sensory area which is located in my cerebral cortex so now what we have to notice the motor fibers they were running in the ventral root but the sensory fibers they are running in the dorsal root i hope we are clear so far so now we have talked about the innervation of my skeletal muscle who was doing that the motor fiber the sensations we have talked about sensation they have been carried by the sensory fibers okay let's talk about the organization of sympathetics within a spinal nerve so we need to look into the section of the spinal cord and the location is the lateral horn and these lateral horns are present only from t1 to l2 levels of the spinal cord not above and not below and from here we have the beginning of preganglionic sympathetic fiber and this preganglionic sympathetic fiber it runs in the ventral root and it relays into sympathetic ganglion which is connected with the spinal nerve with the help of two communicating channels and these are gray and white rami committants so my preganglionic sympathetic fibers comes and relays within this ganglion and then from here the journey of postganglionic sympathetic fiber begins and when it reach when the spinal nerve emerges out of intervertebral foramina it bifurcates it divides into a dorsal ramus and a ventral ramus and my sympathetic fiber runs both with the dorsal ramus part as well as ventral ramus part 
and the destiny is to go and supply the smooth muscle which are widely located all across. So this postganglionic fibers we can see it's going backwards to supply and then it's running forward to have control of the smooth muscles and throughout it gives its different branches and they are basically controlling the smooth muscles. After that now we have talked about the motor component, the sensory component and sympathetic component. So let's summarize quick. So we are looking at a motor fiber and how it runs within a spinal nerve both in the dorsal and ventral rami and giving their respective branches. And then the sensory fibers who are carrying the sensations all across and then it's going back to the higher centers. And then the last, the sympathetics, the preganglionic and the postganglionic and then it follows the same pathway. So that completes a spinal nerve. A, what spinal nerve? A typical spinal nerve. An organization of motor, sensory and sympathetic fibers within a typical spinal nerve.